Almost 10 years ago, the summer sun beat down on the city like a blacksmith's hammer on hot iron. I couldn't take it anymore. I craved the cool shade of green trees and the whispering wind through leaves. So, I jumped into my trusty red car, armed with a beat-up map, and drove through the night towards the countryside. The air was fresh and clean as the sun peeked over the horizon, painting the sky with beautiful orange and pink streaks. The countryside was a sight to behold. Wide open fields stretched out before me, dotted with grazing cows and fluffy sheep. But then, disaster struck. My car sputtered and coughed, finally giving up with a groan. Stuck in the middle of nowhere with no gas. Panic started to grip me. Where was I? I checked the map, but there were no towns marked nearby. Just then, a vision of beauty appeared down the road, a girl with long, black hair that glistened in the morning sun. She wore a flowing dress that seemed old-fashioned, and she carried a basket of colorful wildflowers. Hesitantly, I approached her. Excuse me, I stammered, I seem to be lost. I ran out of gas. Do you know where I can find some? Her blue eyes widened for a moment, but then a kind smile spread across her face. Don't worry, she said in a gentle voice, come with me to our village. Maybe they can help you out. I followed her down a dusty path, a sense of wonder growing in me. The village she led me to was unlike anything I'd ever seen. The houses were small and built of dark wood, with flower pots overflowing with blooms decorating their windows. People bustled about wearing clothes that seemed like they belonged in a history book. They were friendly and welcoming, offering me food and drink. Their way of life was fascinating. They used horses for transportation instead of cars, and they cooked over open fires in their hearths. The food tasted delicious but quite different from what I was used to. I spent the whole day with them, feeling like I had stepped back in time. Later that evening, when we were outside under the starry sky, the girl, who told me her name was Mary, became quiet and sad. Why are you sad? I asked, feeling concerned. I can't tell you, she whispered, you're just a visitor. You have to leave tonight. My heart sank. I didn't want to leave. I liked Mary in this interesting village. But Mary insisted, her voice filled with fear. It's dangerous here at night, she explained. So, with a heavy heart, I said goodbye and walked off into the darkness. After walking for hours, exhausted and scared, I finally reached a town. I found a gas station and filled up my car, finally feeling a sense of relief. But when I asked about the village, the old man at the counter gave me a strange look. He didn't recognize the name, and when I described it, he shook his head. There used to be a village here, he muttered, but that was a long time ago. 
a big fire destroyed it centuries back. There's nothing left now, just some ruins and stories. My head spun. How could this be? What Mary said about leaving before night, it all started to fit together. The old-fashioned clothes, the horse-drawn carts, the cooking over an open fire, could the village appear only once every ten years? Grief washed over me. I had fallen for Mary, and now it seemed she was part of a forgotten past. But the man's words sparked a flicker of hope. Some say, he mumbled, on a certain night every ten years, the village comes back to life for a single day. Suddenly, I knew what I had to do. It would be a long wait, but I couldn't give up. Two months. That's all I had to wait until the village might reappear. On that night, I would find Mary again, and this time, I wouldn't leave until the sun rose. We would be together, even if it meant living in a village lost in time. And so, the summer adventure that began with escaping the city heat ended with a love that defied the boundaries of time and reality. The memory of Mary and the mysterious village continues to warm my heart, fueling my determination to be reunited with her on that special night, ten years from now.